Hello Cup Coders, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing good. It is Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we gotta, we gotta kill a guy here. Oh, turn that back on, there we go. We gotta kill a couple guys here. Hey, hey! No way! I just threw my spell book at him, like, here, take that! <laughs> Die! Splat! <laughs> All right, well, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're all, you know, reached your destination safely. I know that a lot of you maybe travel, may have traveled for the holidays. So if you have, I hope you reached out there safely and I hope that you come home safely. Um, so it is Thanksgiving. I want, I'm curious, like, I know everybody has their, their, you know, traditions and their traditional holiday dinners. And some people have things that are a little different than what other people do so if you guys do anything outside of the norm if if your family does anything that other people don't do for thanksgiving by all means please comment below and let me know what it, what it is that you do that's interesting because that I, I'm, I'm always curious to know what other people do like it, it's interesting to me to find out how other families observe holidays like they everybody does it different like um Christmas, for instance, you know, my family growing up, we always had two major present days. You know, Christmas Eve, we all get together at grandma's house and I'd say around 10 o'clock, we'd start opening presents and we'd usually be done by about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, something like that. Um, and the way we did it is we'd have the kids go up under the tree and pull out all the presents and pass them out. And... You know, when once we got, you know, everybody got one present, then then we pretty much let whoever wanted to go up under the tree and pull the presents out, let them do it, you know. And meanwhile, everybody's opening presents all at once, you know. Nobody's, we're not taking time to see, oh, what did they get? What did they get? Everybody's getting it and everybody's shouting and saying, hey, look what I got. Oh, look at this. So it, it, it was always an exciting time in my family. Cause, you know, everybody's so excited. Everybody's opening presents at once and everybody's trying to get everyone else's attention. Say, hey, look what I got. So it, it was really awesome and powerful. And then Sunday morning, everybody would wake up and go downstairs and see what it is that Santa Claus brought. So that was really cool because then the kids were excited once again. Hey, look what I got Santa Claus brought me. Oh my God, it's awesome. So that's, that's kind of, you know, I always thought, you know, because when you're growing up and you do stuff like that, you always assume, well, that's new. That's what everybody does. It's not. It's not what everybody does. Like, apparently my wife's family, they did it differently. You know, they, they, instead, they would open up all their presents on things on Christmas Day. And they might allow each other to open up one present on Christmas Eve. That's how they did it. So it's like, when, when I got with her and she, you know, I saw that, I was like, hey, that's interesting. You know, that's. Not how my family did it, but it's pretty cool. Actually, no, they didn't open up. I don't think they did open up presents on Christmas Eve. I think they just opened up all their presents on Christmas Day. So that was kind of like our, our, um, so where I'm looking for compromise because my family opened up all presents from each other on Christmas Eve and they got Santa Claus presents on Christmas Day. So our compromise was that we all get to open up one present on Christmas Eve and then everything else waits till Christmas Day so there you go um the other thing I noticed is that some families and I'm not I don't know if my wife's family ever did this but I know some families did it my family did not but ooh, teleport let's just do teleport to get up there some families would have all all the presents from Santa Claus would be wrapped as well as all the presents from everyone else. So you'd have to actually unwrap Santa Claus presents. So that's where, that's another place where my, all of these presents from each other got wrapped. The presents from Santa Claus, he would just set that stuff out and he would make a nice little display. Like, I mean, seriously, some of the displays he made, it's like a store display. You know, you got this bike standing up in the behind and you got this, you know, He-Man fortress in front of it and you know, a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, it would look like a store display, but it was really cool though because while we had five kids growing up in my family, we all knew which one of those store displays were ours. Nobody ever had to tell us. We just knew. Because it's like Santa Claus always made sure to get one special gift for each child that that child was asking for. That was unique that the other children were not asking for. 
And so you would look and you would see and you would see that. And you're like, oh, this is mine. Awesome. And, and you know that everything else that's sitting around it is yours. You know, there's nobody, no question about it type stuff. So, and as far as Thanksgiving goes, what my family did is we would get together all at grandma's house. Well, it was always at grandma's house. And if, you, if you're noticing a theme there, grandma had a big house. So we'd all get together at grandma's house and the girls, I'd say the girls, but the women would all go in the kitchen and they would cook, you know, a huge Thanksgiving dinner. I'm talking, we would have turkey and ham and mashed potatoes and, oh man, that's so much food, so much food. I mean, we're talking, you know, you've got like 10 women in the kitchen all cooking and talking with each other and stuff. So there's food constantly being made throughout the entire day. And generally, we'd all sit down and eat around 2 o'clock, something like that. And then the food would just be left out. We'd just leave the food out so that you would go in whenever you got hungry, you wanted some more, you'd just go on back in there and grab another plate, whatever. You know, it, it would stay out. And usually they would pick it up somewhere around 6, 7 o'clock at night and start putting it away. But, oh man, so there are certain foods that we had in my family that I don't think very many people actually had, you know, and they, at their Thanksgiving meals. Um, I mean, obviously one is we always had turkey, like everybody had turkey, but we always had turkey and ham. And it wasn't just any ham, it was that spiral cut ham, that honey baked spiral cut ham. Oh my God, it's great stuff. And that's because not everybody in the family liked turkey. I, for one, I was never a big fan of turkey, but it might've been just because of the way they cooked it. Like the turkey in my family was always dry. I never liked it. But what we had was unique is we always had oysters, fried oysters. Um, grandpa would go out and uh, me and grandpa would go out in like a week or two in advance and we'd start, you know, taking the, taking a little boat out in, into the bay or whatever. And we'd throw out some pots out there and then we'd come back, you know, a week later, you know, a couple days before Thanksgiving, we'd pull all these pots in and look, see if there were any oysters in it or, and if it, that didn't work, then we'd go and get, you know, Ronnie Welch across the street and he would take his boat out with us and we'd go dredging for oysters. And so we always made sure we had oysters, whether we caught them ourselves or if we went out and, and bought them from the, from the Welch's because, you know, they ran a, a little crabbing shop, an oyster shop. So, I mean, not a store, not like um, a restaurant, but they would go out and they would catch the stuff and just sell it to people. And you'd have to cook it yourself. So we always had oysters and they would take these oysters and they would, they would shuck them raw. I mean, I pre-cook them at all. They would shuck the oysters. Shuck them, meaning you know, taking the, the shell, take them out of the shells. Shuck them, clean them, get them. You know, they wouldn't be as slimy as they were. So we chuck them out, rinse them off, and then he had uh, flour and uh, he had some kind of batter that he would make that he would dip the oyster in and dip them into crunched up saltine crackers and then throw them in a the deep fryer. Oh my God, those were awesome. Super awesome. You just, you've never had oysters. Do you had, you know, home fried oysters? Like, I know a lot of people eat oysters raw. And I, I could do that. I used to do that, but I couldn't do it now. It's the texture. It's just, ugh. Oh, I can't do it. But fried oysters, oh my God, they're great. So we, I, I come from a, <laughs> my family's big on frying stuff. If you haven't noticed, we, we, we like frying all kinds of stuff. And that's kind of where I got it from. I'm, I have a deep fryer now and, I'm always like, you know, hey, I wonder what, what this would be like deep fried. And I'll throw it in there. Like, oh, weird stuff. Deep fried hot dogs. Oh, my God. I got to tell you. Try it. You got to try it. Deep fried hot dogs. It's I, I, the best way I can put it is, you know how you get those hot dogs that are cooked on that, that rolling thing where it's nice and crispy on the outside, nice, hot, and juicy on the inside. Yeah, well, that's a deep fried hot dog right there. A little more grease, but it's it, it's so good. Not everybody's gonna like it though. So you gotta try that. And of course, you know, there's always the deep fried pickles, which me and my family have have a definite love affair with those things. Um, God, and what's the other Thanksgiving food we always have? Deep fried squash. Because we, you know, we grew up on a farm. I grew up on a farm. We had a we had a farm. Um, we didn't have. No, you know, when I was younger, when I was like a baby and stuff, yeah, we had a full-fledged farm. They had cows, chickens, horses, and all kinds of stuff. But as I grew up, they got started getting rid of all the animals because you know it's 
grandma and grandpa were getting older and they couldn't take care of them anymore and all the kids all their kids had grown up and moved out so it was just grandma and grandpa so they started selling off you know all the the animals to where we didn't have any more animals left but they kept the, the garden like we always had a huge garden actually i say it's huge but for the area that i'm coming from it really wasn't that big like, I, I knew i knew of a lot larger farms around the area we didn't have a very big farm but you know as a kid you're like oh wow it, 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 it's a huge farm so we always had this farm. We always grew all kinds of stuff for ourselves. You know, always had corn, tomatoes, carrots, potatoes, um, watermelon. We even grew our own watermelons. I mean, you name it. If we could grow it, we, it was in the garden. Like grandpa made sure that we had all the vegetables and everything we would need from the garden. So I don't ever remember my grandparents ever buying a whole lot at the grocery store like we go to the grocery store for things that you can't grow out of your garden like did we go and get you know beef and and pork and all the meats would come from the grocery store and then we get eggs from the grocery store and then and then aside from that grandma would go and get some you know little debbie snacks and some cookies and stuff not normally not a lot though because you know she was a cooker she liked to cook that was her favorite pastime she made cookies and, and cakes and stuff but Every now and then she'd go and get the little Debbie snacks and, and have those at the house. And then she'd pick up ice cream and stuff. But that's pretty much it. Like everything else we got from the farm growing up. So Thanksgiving was, you know, kind of for our family. It was like, hey, you know, that's, you think about it. Thanksgiving comes right after the, the, the fall harvest. You know, we get all this stuff out of the farm. And then, so in our family, really, it was... Thanksgiving was really come right after we had managed to pull everything out of the garden and can what we were going to can and put everything else away like where it's supposed to be. So I guess you could say my family was kind of giving thanks for all the bountiful harvest that we gotten out of the garden type stuff. And it was always more than enough. We always had more than enough coming out of the garden. Like I always remember grandma taking in bags and bags of kale to people or, or huge bags and we're all, huge grocery bags full of carrots to someone else you know just just to give it away because we had too much for ourselves but, so that was that's how my thanksgiving was you know we the kids would run around and play the women would cook in the kitchen and the men would be in the living room watching football games or or earlier in the day they'd be watching some the Macy's Day Thanksgiving parade or something and, and so that's kind of how our Thanksgiving day would go and then after dinner after the two o'clock meal which I, you call, I guess you would call it dinner but I never really call it dinner it was always lunch to me I just cut off the thing and now I'm coming to water dang it so then after you know the Thanksgiving meal then you know a lot of the adults would go sit down and women would go back in the kitchen they would play pitch which is a card game that was popular in my family and the men would go into the living room and they'd put on football games and half the time most of them would be asleep within like you know 20 minutes or so and the kids would be pretty much left to fend for themselves running around and running into the kitchen grabbing another plate of food and going back outside and playing in the woods and stuff oh my god that reminds me yes this one thanksgiving uh, me me and my cousins, we had this, um, this scooter. Now, it's not like the scooters you have today. Like these scooters you have today have these small rollerblade type wheels on it and stuff. This was this was a really cool scooter. It had a really it had big tires. I'm I'm talking these tires were like full six inches in in radius, you know, a full t foot in diameter. I mean, and they were air based tires, so you know you you could they bounced and stuff. I mean, this was a really cool scooter. So my cousins and I got this bright idea that we'd take the scooter down on the pier and play a game to see who can ride closest to the edge of the pier without falling off. Mind you, this is Thanksgiving. Okay, it is. And Thanksgiving in Maryland, it's a little chilly. Like, even if it's not that chilly outside, the water is cold. Like, we're talking frigid water. It is... It is not frozen water, but it is darn close to being frozen, is what that water is. So, <laughs> what we did is we were riding on, riding to the end of the pier and jumping off the scooter and letting the scooter go over. Now, 
I'm sure by now you're already thinking, well, of what the problem with that is. All right, so we're letting the scooter fall over into the into the water. Now, mind you, remember I said it has air based tires, so it floats. It doesn't sink to the bottom. And we'd reach over, pull the scooter right back up, and and do it again. Well, the end of the pier is starting to get wet because you know we're pulling the scooter back up over the end of the pier. Yeah. So then it comes. We're all doing it. We're all coming really, really close. My cousin was the closest. He came with like, I mean, he stopped and his foot was three inches away from the edge of the pier. I'm like, I'm gonna beat him. I'm gonna beat him so bad. So I'm like, yeah. So I ride up real fast. I jump off. I, my foot hits that pier and slides off. Yep. I slide off. I went over into the water. Push. Oh my God. It was cold. It was freezing. And I'm sitting there trying to swim back. And I'm like, hey, pull me out, pull me out, pull me out. It's cold. Yeah. And my cousins can't pull me up. I'm like, oh my God. So I ended up having to swim all the way around the pier up to the shore and climb out. And by then I'm, I'm right. I'm royally frigid. I'm like, oh my God, it's cold, it's cold. So I'm like, I run up into the garage and I open up. And I throw some wood on the stove and get it heated up. We had, um, Grandma and Grandpa had wood stoves to heat, to heat the garage in the house. I mean, not, not heat, electric heat. There was no gas heat. We had actual wood stoves. Really great. So I threw some wood in the stove and got it, got it going, got it heating up. And I'm standing there freezing. And my Grandma comes out with <laughs> new clothes and a towel for me. I'm like, oh. But yeah, so that was, that's the funniest moment. Funniest moment in Thanksgiving that in my family is because, you know, we were playing a game and I went over, I lost. And it was my idea to come up with the game. I was like, hey, let's do this. And they're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I think our downfall there is because we let the scooter go over. Like if we'd have figured out a way of doing it without letting the scooter go over, we might have been able to continue the game and I might not have lost. Someone else might have lost. But because we kept letting the scooter go over and the, and the pier got wet, yeah, my foot slipped on the water. It it it, it started becoming frigid. It was you know because it wasn't in the main body of water. So if you notice, if you pay attention, if you're gonna you see a small puddle on the ground. That small puddle is going to freeze over before like a lake or a pond or a river or creek will, because there's more water. It's more, it's movement. And so when you have water that is just standing still and it's not in a deep body of water, it's going to freeze before anyone else. And that's kind of what had happened. Like it had been that close to freezing. And what happened is the water that was on the pier had froze. It started to freeze. And so when it came my turn and I put my foot down, my foot went down on ice. And that's why I went over. So <laughs> I guess maybe, you know, it, it, it's, it, was, it was definitely not funny when it happened. But now looking back and it's like, oh man, that was that was so funny. That was so cool. <laughs> like, oh my god, it was so cold though, but it was so funny. No, it's just stuff like that. Oh my god. And the one year my grandpa got the brilliant idea to deep fry the turkey. Now this is way back before, you know, there had been, you know, some there was no internet back then. Not like it is today. You know, people didn't just go and look up stuff like how do you deep fry a turkey how do you do this i mean that's the internet is relatively new right so grandpa got a brilliant idea let's deep fry a turkey he did not thaw the turkey uh, uh no but he was smart enough to take his deep fryer and move it out into the middle of the parking lot the middle of the driveway so it wasn't near anything oh my god it was that was hilarious nobody got hurt Thankfully, and that's why I, that's why I can say it was hilarious. But if somebody had gotten hurt, this would not be a funny story. But it, it it was it was funny. So Grandpa, he would I guess he knew that something could go wrong. So he had, he was holding this turkey with these super long tongs over top of the, of the deep fryer, and he used the and he let go and let the turkey drop in. And as soon as he let go, he turned and ran like he was he was gone. He's like I'm not near this thing. And when he did, the, that turkey dropped in there, and it, it, you could hear, boom, 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 boom. and then the darn thing started shaking, and boom, it popped up. You know, the oil comes flying out the top of the darn thing and splattered all over the place. And like I said, it was one of those—you had to be there. 
really had to be there. But I, I, I tell that to, to remind you that today is Thanksgiving for you. And if you are deep frying a turkey, by all means, make sure it's thawed. Do not put a frozen turkey into your deep fryer. It will bubble and explode. You have to completely thaw your turkey before you deep fry it. Yes, sirree. And make sure you pat off as much water as you can. Because when you work with a deep fryer, it's the water that causes it to, to bobble up. Uh, so if you were to take a piece of food and put it into deep fryer that has absolutely no water in it, it will not bubble. It will not. Now, of course, that's physically impossible because everything we have has water. Really? You're trying to hit me, aren't you? It's trying to hit me. That dropped that stuff right down on top of me. It's like, haha, I see him there. Bang! So, yeah, so be careful if you're deep frying your turkey today. I definitely do not want anyone to get injuries. That would be a bad idea. Whoa! Head you off before you guys start shooting me there, see? Neater, neater, neater. And I told you guys the other day about that I am interviewing, I have interviewed for a new job. I am still waiting to hear back from that. I do not know the prognosis on that. Um, I probably won't hear back from that until next week. Until, well, not say next week. But by the time you watch this video, I probably, I may have already gotten the re results back. I don't know. Um, so mind you, I'm recording this on Sunday. You guys aren't actually going to see it until Wednesday. So chances are I probably already know by the time you watch this video. But I will let you guys know as soon as I can how that went. Um, I can't give a whole lot of details on it. It is a very lucrative position. Um, it, it's, uh, let's put it this way. It, it follows to my skill set. Not necessarily what I want to do, but, but based on what I've learned to do. Um, for the last six years, I've been working with a comp working for a company, and we use a specific type, of, a specific tool. And there aren't that many companies that actually use this tool. And because I have six years' experience, that makes me, you know, uniquely suited for the job that this, these people are hiring for. And I mean, I'm not fully suited. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot about this that I don't know, but I'm willing to learn it. But I have a deeper understanding of the system than most people who do work in it because of the way I've worked in it. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And it, like I said, it's a very lucrative position. So I'm really hoping that I get it. I'm super excited. But I don't want to jinx it. Be like, yeah, yeah this is who I'm going to be working for. Because, you know, that would suck. But if I don't get it, hey, I mean, I tried. I, I tried. It, it's, it's definitely one that I'm... I've never asked for this much money from an employer before. And I'm really hopeful that they, that they accept it, that they take it. Let me flashing. So yeah, and like I said, and if I get the job, that's gonna make some massive changes to my lifestyle and to the way I run this show. I mean, cause one of the things that I plan on doing is it pretty much I'll be able to work at home. I'll be able to work at home with this new job if I get the job. So what my plan is, is when I work from home, I'm going to record on a daily basis instead of waiting until the weekend. So that means that every morning before I start work, I'll sit down and I'll record half an hour show and I'll edit it and get it rendering and then I'll start working. And then as soon as it's done rendering, I'll upload the video and set it to go. So I might move my publish time back, you know, to somewhere in the mid afternoon or something like that. I don't know. But that's that's my plan is that i'll I mean, not necessarily upload it for that day like if i record it on a monday it might be published on tuesday but that way i'm not recording all at once so i can potentially have more to talk about in each episode you know um and that also means that i'll have more time between episodes to do stuff that i otherwise wouldn't be able to do There we go. That's what I wanted. Thank you. So that, that, that's that's a major bonus. Like I'll be able to work from home, so I'll be able to do more for the show. 
than I would otherwise. I mean, I still have to work. Don't get me wrong on that. It, it's I got people will be paying me to work. I got to work. You know, you got to put in your your eight to ten hours every day. You can't just you know be like, oh well, you're gonna pay me. I'm gonna do this um and not do your stuff. No, you got to work. Um, and so I will be working the job, but that'll also be able to restructure my life so that I can do more stuff. Because you think about it, what, what's going on right now is I go to work. I'm at the office for eight to ten hours, and then I have to drive home. Now, mind you, my drive isn't that far, that long. We have a 15-minute drive to get to work and a 15-minute drive to get home. But you think about it, that 15-minute drive, I could be spending to record for you guys. So then that frees up my weekend for me to just do whatever with the family. So that's kind of the plan. That's kind of what I've been planning to do is we're just going to, you know, record in, on the weekdays, you know, just before I start work. And that way, you know, I have time with the family for the weekend. We can go do whatever we want. Which is very vitally important. And I definitely plan to do more stuff on the weekends. You know, instead of staying home recording, some days I want to go, you know, Dollywood or take the kids to Six Flags or something. And we have gotten to another ocean, it looks like. So let's see how this handles flying on the ocean. Oh. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and stop right here. That's all the time we have for today. As always, a like, a comment, and a share lets me know that you care. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you back here on the next episode.